So is this live? Yeah, it's yes. live. It is okay. live. There's 70 yeah, plus I, I, people attending. Yeah, I just, I, I just saw Yossi's message. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so anyways, uh, let's do it uh, very uh, properly and professionally. So <laughs> like, uh, I do have our starting slide. So yes, welcome everyone to uh, our third uh, panel of the day called Congrats on Your Co-Production, Now What? So basically, like, you know, it's supposed to be a breezy, easy one where we talk to filmmakers who are right in the thick or already finishing their uh, uh, co-production. Uh, most of them are doing their feature films for their first feature film. And a lot of them were very lucky to be able to shoot like right before the COVID happened. Uh, so basically like most of the uh, period since then, they're just doing the post-production. Um, but again, you know, like uh, our previous panel, these are all co-productions and most of them went to Script Labs. So we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, like what, what do they feel at this moment? That's what I wanted to know, you know, like the pulse of the moment, you know, their gut feelings. So yeah, so we have the four uh, filmmakers here, uh, two directors and two producers. So let me introduce first clockwise. So uh, just, just say hi quickly and then I will go into, uh, once this slide is over, I'll go in more into details. So the first one I want to introduce is uh, Carlo Francisco Manatad from the Philippines uh, on the left corner, left top corner. Hello. So that's Carlo. Uh, he's the director of his first feature film called Whether the Weather is Fine. And as you can see, it's a, Philippines, France, Singapore, Indonesia, Germany, Qatar co-production. Oh my lord, that's six <laughs> countries. Jesus, yeah. like that is insane. I made five countries and I thought it was insane, but you have six. I mean, wow, you know that's we're, that's we're, amazing. We still we, we still have space for more if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's Thailand? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hong Kong. And then uh, Camila Andini, a uh, director from Indonesia who is now doing her third feature film. So she's the one who is more advanced, quote unquote. Uh, so hi, you, hi, hi, Camila. Hi. <laughs> hi, everyone. And she, her project is called Uni and it's an Indonesia, France, Singapore, Philippines co-production. And then uh, we have two producers, uh, Lai Weijie, who is a producer from Singapore, but now currently based in Toronto, Canada. And his project is called Taste by Lebao, a first feature film by a Vietnamese director. So hi, Weijie. Hey. hey, guys. <laughs> hey, everyone. And the project is a Vietnam, Singapore, France, Thailand, Germany co-production. So five countries. And, you know... Uh, last but not least, we have another producer who is a French Cambodian producer, Davi Chu. Hello, Davi. Yeah. <laughs> nope, that's YJ. <laughs> And he's yeah. the producer of uh, Kabik Nyang's uh, first feature film called White Building, which is a Cambodia, France, China, Qatar co production. So, yes, a lot of like, you know, slashes over here because. Um, that's how we work in Southeast Asia. And yeah, so let's, let's uh, talk a little bit about um, what you guys are working on. What is your uh, current status? So uh, Carlo, uh, you are now in Paris, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you are now doing your post-production there, right? Yeah, I'm, quite, I'm, fin fin I'm trying to finish sound post here. So. Ah. Mm. So I mean, like, um, we've been doing post for quite a very long while because I finished. We finished shooting last year, February, just before the pandemic actually happened, and then because of other situations, we had to like postpone, and then move and move and move and move, and then, um, luckily when the government of the Philippines lifted the ban a bit, so I had to fly here end of October. But since right now, we, I, I, we thought of finishing the whole sound post by December, but we quite extend a bit and there was quite a few problems here and there. That's why I'm still around. So, yeah. <laughs> so you've been in Paris since October? I didn't know it was that long. Uh, I knew well, you were there. Last, last week of October. Well, that's basically the last day of October. I, I arrived on the 31st. Wow. Okay. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. And then, and, and Dini, uh, so I mean, because you were also doing a French co production. So uh, did you have to travel at all? Or because you've mostly been in Indonesia, right? Yeah, mostly I've been in Indonesia. Same like Carlo, I think I finished 
the shooting on January, so right before the lockdown as well. Um, and right now still in post-production, but um, in French, actually, uh, we use, uh, we're working on the music with French mm. music director, so I don't need to fly there. Mm. Um, I have to do um, sound posts in Singapore and um, posts in Thailand, but unfortunately, mm. I cannot fly into <laughs> both <laughs> countries. So I have to deal with the long distance um, sound mixing and long distance grading. Mm. And yes, <laughs> and that's actually, <laughs> and I think that's actually one of the points I will be talking about is, you know, like, how do you do a co-production during COVID? Because that's one of the things that, you know, like, it's such a pain because you're supposed to be traveling and you're supposed to be doing these things and you have requirements. You have to do them in, in these places and then but you cannot fly. So what do you do, right? So, yeah. yeah. And um, wait, you like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what's your calendar? Because the film is pretty much done, right? Lebao's film, Taste. Um, we're, we're basically done, but similarly with Carlo, we just, we're just, well, I mean, maybe he has other things as well, but we're, we just have the sound mix left, the final mix. Mm -hmm. um, so actually Bao and the Vietnamese producer Tao, they're both um, quarantining in, um, in Cambodia at the moment. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, but and that's the when, last stage. Yeah. When did they finish uh, shooting the film? When did you guys? We shoot? finished shooting. It feels so long ago now. Um, in 2019, I think in August. <laughs> I think okay. in August, and then um, oh. we we you know pre-COVID time, so we cut the film in Thailand, and then the last time we all saw each other in person was in February. Actually, we, we hung out with um, Devi. Um, in February right. in Paris and that was in Paris uh, mm -hmm. yeah yeah and that was um, to do our color grade and that was the last time we saw each other in person <laughs> and how about Davi like uh, what's your current status with um, so building? the film Why Building by Kevich Ning was shot in Cambodia in October 2019 after which uh, Kevich and he was planning throughout the co-production with, with friends. And I think the four project mm -hmm. did receive a CNC at the Cinema du Monde, correct? Right, exactly. So We're going to talk about that. With the obligation yeah. of mm -hmm. expanding friends, uh, Kevich uh, fled to France uh, for two months and a half to do his editing, which he finished in March. And yeah, COVID really started strong in end of March. So he just fled at the right time. And he was supposed to come back for finalizing his uh, color grading, but he couldn't. So it was a very difficult year of trying to see how we how we will do things we were hoping to bring it back in september and then we cancel at the last minute is come back to france in september because that's exactly the second wave uh, was happening mm. in france and so finally we find a way <laughs> to do distance color grading which i was very afraid it wouldn't work especially with the facilities in cambodia the internet speed and stuff that was kind of a nightmare to set up but it did work so mm. we were very happy and i think at the end mm. kevich was pretty satisfied about how to work the process and I think the, mm. the, the color grader we're working with, French color grader Yov Moore, is also uh, the French color grader who worked with Le Baos film. Mm. Uh, and we just finished mixing, I mean, uh, December, just before Christmas. So the film should be finished in the next weeks. I mean, I'm waiting for the final DCP uh, to test. That's, so that's, that's at, at the end of, after losing one year, that's a pretty good news. Okay, yeah. great. That is says, send us the link. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, I mean, it, 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 is, it is quite rare to have, you know, like these films that were basically shot bef right before COVID and then now it's stuck in co-production, you know, like yeah. uh, logistics, basically, because, I mean, like, let, let us explore that a little bit first, you know, like, let's go back in, in time a little bit and uh, why did you decide to do co-productions and, you know, uh, or like, uh, and when did the project even start? So like, Carlo, because I know your project was really like in development for, well, let's be honest, really quite a long time. Uh, when did it start uh, developing whether the weather is fine? Because it, it had another name, right? Back in 2013 or 14. Yeah, it was um, a wrong season. So 2014, we started, uh, but we, I, I mean, like me and ARMY did not really think about it being a co-production, a film for co-production. Um, I was just, I, I was eyeing for a local film festival to join the, the film into, which luckily we got, we got we got in, but I think the game changer when we really decided to try and explore how co-production works was when when we got into this local festival who gives grants. At the same time, we actually got into La Fabrique du Cinema du Monde in Cannes. Right. Um, and then their thing was like, 
you can you can join but it should be the film should not be shot yet it should be mm-hmm. either in pre, in pre-production or development so we had me and army had to decide in a way where do we go with what i want mm-hmm. like the local festival which i am just given like almost just three, three to six three to five months to work on the film and make the final film and show it to the public or we do we try this um international thingy which i really don't have any idea before and let's see how it goes so from from that point on forward after our experience with with la fabric i think we kind of managed to like decide and try our our luck with with doing co-productions but we were very very young before like we really didn't know how how it would how to go about all these things and what 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 are labs how do how to do workshops how to do uh, with fundings and all something like that but i mean like right now we're here already so i mean i mean it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> and of course you know, you went to torino film lab also to you know to do to work on your project so i mean like was yeah, it, yeah was it something um, that you just decided to do or what, what why why did you decide it was it, it it was a mutual decision with within the the group because like Um, when we did um, La Fabrique, I I felt the urge to like let's try this co-production thing, but I really we really don't know about it. And then um, we were trying to get co-producers to go on board, but every time they would ask us like, oh, when do you plan to shoot? We plan to shoot this year or next year, and they would just like either laugh or like, okay, let's talk with your next project. We don't want to be part of a project that wants to shoot like really really fast with all these you, you, they they really want to be part of the like the process of development and all that thing but then again and then also they they were not quite confident with regards to me as a director that's how i felt during that time just because i think the work that i always present to them they would said either it it was experimental which i feel is not or sometimes non narrative <laughs> and before my 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 work uh, the 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 uh the feature project was more classical in essence in terms of like the how it's written so they said like give us confidence of what of of, of that you can do something about it so we we tried applying at this it was on the same year we tried applying for TFL Torino Film Lab and then I, it's the same year also i i made Joe Deluxe to like show the producers that i can do something different and at the same time i i got to in to both sections like Torino and then we got to Saman de la Critique. And then I think after that, that's when we started to know how these things work. And I do feel um, Torino Film Lab gave me a better view of in terms of the development because I, I, I just do feel before I really, it's not like I really don't care, but it's more of like, um, okay, I, I, feel, I feel confident about this, let's shoot. But because with Torino Film Lab, you have all these like, people trying to um critic your work and it's in another in another's perspective in a way it 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 kind of like pushes puts me grounded in a way and lets me rethink all these things and it's not just like very subjective but you also have this objective things running through different comments of people that you can hear and then you just realize like uh, i need more time to work on it so i think that <laughs> torino film lab was really 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 special and it it, it was very helpful for me Yeah because I mean like you know like not only were you developing your project at that time you were shooting short films and like you said you, I, you did a, uh, a short film that was uh, got into Cannes uh, Jonah Lurks and then of course then later on you did another short film that got into Toronto so in some ways for you to prove yourself you made short films at the same time you know during the same time as a work in progress in some ways right so that yeah. kind of also helped to kind of actualize your feature film yeah but also in a way people would think like Six to seven years is really, really <laughs> long of a of a project being developed up until it it's being shot. But I think it it helped me shooting shorts. Mm. It's like be, basically you're developing, you're waiting for something to happen for the feature. But at the back, I'm also doing something. So I wasn't really that like, oh, let's do this, let's do this, because I was also doing other things. So right. it helped. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, but but I mean, like, so so the the main question is, you know, do you regret? Do you regret it? Because you could have shot it in three to five months, or you waited seven, eight years. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. I mean, there are a few struggles, very um, obstacles here and there, and like a few problems here and there. But 
I don't regret the the fact that I chose to do this very long process of doing a film. So. Mm. Okay. Good, good, good. And then very Luigi, diplomatic like, answer. Yeah, I mean that's good. We'll we'll, we'll get less diplomatic as we get on. Well. Like, on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So so Wei Jie, like um, you know, I think you know, like of course, you know, like uh, you're the producer, so it's a slightly different. But um, mm-hmm. was it also like kind of like a situation where you know you tell the director, oh, we do a co-production, and then like what what was the kind of communication between you two for you to decide to basically like you know, do this long-term development, do co-productions, go to labs. What was like, like was mm-hmm. it like, yeah. I mean, in terms of timeline, I came on board the project in 2016. I think they had been developing the project for maybe a year or two prior to that. Um, and I, I don't think necessarily, I think similarly with Carlo, I think at the start, it wasn't necessarily that we were thinking, oh, you know, we want to do a co-production or something. The, the first sort of instinct was to that you know, this was a, an idea that we all liked a lot, and it was it was more about the development, and then um, the co-production thing was maybe at the back of my mind because um, the project that I I was do, I did prior to Taste um, Popeye by Kirsten Tan, um, we had had the opportunity to go to places like you know um, yeah Torino um, Film Lab and to Cannes Atelier, and then we had the opportunity to meet with you know potential co-producers. But um, with Popeye, um, ultimately we decided not to, um, mm-hmm. you know, because maybe it was you know for that particular film, it it the arrangements that we came up with mm-hmm. worked for that. But then um, you know it was at the back of my mind for sure when when I was working on Taste. Um, but actually, the way it happened was while we were developing, because of the relationships um, from previously mm-hmm. from Popeye. Um, the uh, Mathieu, who was at Torino Film Lab at the time, had contacted me, and then Georges from Cannes Atelier had contacted me to ask. You know, I think once in a while they like to keep track of you know what projects are being made and things, and they asked me what I was working on. And um, I remember being the process for Popeye being very positive, going for these um, for the project market Atelier, and then for the lab um, at Torino, and um, and then I told them about, about the project. Um, and, and then we were lucky enough to get in. And then during that process, I got the opportunity to introduce, you know, Tao and Bao, the Vietnamese team, to, um, yeah, to people that I met before prior to. So, mm-hmm. so in the end, like a lot of the co-producers that came on board Taste were um, co-producers that I ha- had actually had a relationship with because I had met them, you know, years prior with Popeye. Um, yeah. So it was so the co-production thing kind of happened very naturally. It was people that we kind of were speaking to, I was speaking to already, and then um, and then it was just we were looking for the right project to work together on, and then I happened to be working on this project, and the chemistry mm-hmm. kind of worked out nicely. Nice, but this is your first co-production, actually, right? Because yeah, yeah, know, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, and you know, so far, <laughs> um, I think I think because because. Um, I had known um, the co-producers that we ended up working with from um, when we were develop- when I was developing Popeye, which was what, you know 2015 or something like that. So it was mm. a good period of time, and um, and I think because we were extra cautious because because we knew that you know this is like when whenever you do a film, it's a long term relationship. So you want to make mm. sure that um, you're working with people that um, you trust one and then right. also people that you know share a similar vision they don't have to agree with everything I mean because it can't be everyone so happy and stuff you um, <laughs> you know there has to be some tension so that you know it help, it benefits the project but um, you right. know people that know what the project is they appreciate and understand what the project is and um, and yeah and then and then it's just about that collaboration. So um, thankfully, the chemistry of the, I think it, does, it might not work with every single project, this particular combination, mm. but I think the chemistry and the, the, the working styles of all the, peop- the people that came on board, I think it, it worked out really nicely. I mean, the fact that all of you have basically a really locked picture means that you are in, in many ways already like over, you know, the difficult the most difficult parts because usually I find the editing part to be some of the most contentious. <laughs> Let's just say, like I've always had, I've always had difficulties during the editing period with uh, my filmmakers and with the co-production part. So, like you know, it's it. And if you guys are over that and you guys are doing well, then I think that you're already like over the hump, quote unquote. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. Um, so uh, let's go with uh, Camila. So uh, Dini, like, so yeah, I mean, like, um, 
when when it because you also went to Torino Film Lab with uni. So I mean, like you know, there's only one project that didn't, but we'll get into his project in a bit. But so yeah, I mean, what was the development like with uni? Because in many ways, I mean, your previous film was technically a co-production, but this is the first time where you literally have to do outside. You know, you have to really like. Um, um, do co-productions and then work with a crew or basically like talents from different countries, right? Because before you were just getting grants, but now this is a real, real co-production. So what was that process like for you? Yeah, that's true. I mean, even if compared to others, this is my third film, but actually in terms of um, co-production experiments, I'm as, as new as others as well, because um, that's true. It's mm -hmm. my first um, literally co-production co-production which I have another co-producers um, alongside with me before I work with the team on non-Indonesian team before but actually in terms of financing in terms of producing everything is um, uh, based on grants like full grants and because it's also a micro budget film with my second feature and but the producer mainly from uh, from Indonesia, yeah, only from mm -hmm. Indonesia. Um, so yeah, finally the the third feature I got to to try this um, co-production experience, this whole co-production um, development until until now until the post-production, which um, gives me another new experience as well. I mean, <laughs> first thing is. Um, Finally, I got to do, to make my film with a proper camera. <laughs> a proper <laughs> Before budget. I used mirrorless, <laughs> mirrorless camera with my previous film. So, mm. um, so yeah, I got to do with a proper camera, which is nice. Uh, but the other thing is, I think, uh, creatively, um, usually, uh, when you make a film, especially this kind of film sometimes you have to deal with it with years, like you handle it with, with within years, like six years or three years minimum. And I think creatively as a director, you always need, uh, uh, you always have to create a, a proper distance, like distance is quite important with you and your mm. story and your subject as well. Wow. Like you have to create a proper uh, uh, distance with your story like you cannot be very close but you cannot also very mm. distance with it and there are mm. so many ways to 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 do that and especially when you work on it over years sometimes you're just very close and <laughs> to it and you like there are times when you feel like you know it a lot mm. um, and um, having having co-producers co and having some people that is um, not within country and everything sort of like giving you that that balance that 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 right distance with your story because um, they have different eyes different mm. thoughts different things so you sort of have the, uh, that different perspective which create mm. um, a quite good distance I think compared to what I had before yeah, because um, you you also uni I think also took about three years, right? Because you were in Torino Film Lab in two thousand eighteen, I think. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So you started been developing the project in two thousand seventeen, I think, right? Something yeah, like that. That's true. So, okay. So, so it takes about three, three, three and a half to nearly four years to basically finally yeah. finish the film. And and what do you think of that? You know, because especially with your last two films was a lot more. Well, not not the last one, because that one also took a while, even though it's micro budget, because you were going to so many different labs. But, um, you know, like, uh, yeah, I mean, like, for example, like, what was your experience like with Torino Film Lab, you know? Um. Yeah, I mean... It's quite surprising with Torino Film Lab because I was there with my third feature, which is, I thought after the second, I will never um, experience that, but it was, it was good. Um, of course, um, it's interesting that with my uh, third feature story, I got to experience to see the film um, a whole, in 360 degrees um, perspective since the beginning because 
mm. uh, sometimes before you don't really think that much towards mm. the end like uh, especially mm. with me like my kind of creative is very organic usually so mm. i got like got along the way with what it is so um, this time is quite different like you have to think um, everything since the beginning which is um, it's new experience for me okay so it's a lot more planned than before where it's a bit more spontaneous maybe right yes yes okay. Okay, good, good, good. And of course, uh, let's switch over to our last person who did not go to Torino Film Lab. <laughs> so, uh, Davi Chu, <laughs> Davi Chu, and uh, Kamek, who basically briefly showed up, his director. So, yeah, I mean, like, because uh, White Building was also a project that, you know, was just dating for quite a while. And, you know, like, it was something that, uh, you know, you worked on for quite a while. In fact, you know, work, you worked on for so long that the actual building that you wanted to shoot in was destroyed and then you couldn't shoot them team. anymore <laughs> and then so you had to figure out a way to basically like do the film without this building anymore so what was your, that process like then yeah in my mind it didn't take so much time actually if i tried to re uh, put the the elements because for me the real birth certificate of the film was in Busan, <laughs> 2016 where mm -hmm. we were selected to the asian project market but to be honest at that time we had a treatment that was kind of a first draft of treatment in bakavich and many things were still weak in the treatment um, mm. And so that's when after Asian Project Market, which we got to award, that somehow we got like motivation of, okay, people look to like this project, now we need to make it happen. I'm kind of half kidding, but I was, this kind of <laughs> moment in the life of a film is very important for me to see when suddenly there is something happening, even though it's just mm -hmm. something out of pitching and, and for all the team suddenly it becomes real. So I think that mm -hmm. the real development of the project was really 2017 and 18. Mm -hmm. And the mm. plan was to shoot at end of 2018. And somehow <laughs> we didn't get all the financing in place, as usual. I also got busy with a bigger project, French production, that I was line producing in Cambodia. And so it got delayed and mm. for the season and to avoid the rain season in Cambodia. Basically, people all want to shoot at the end of the year each year. So when you don't shoot in 2018, mm. end of 2018, then we had to shoot in end of 2019, which was what happened. But mm. uh, regarding the co-production, for me, I will say it's pretty natural as a producer for me to think of a co-production because uh, Cambodian film industry is, is still too small as a market, a film market. Mm. It's still also a very like growing film industry that is still in the kind of early steps. So yeah. we wouldn't have the enough financing locally to produce an art house independent film. And even, mm. even if we were fin financing like a mainstream Cambodian film, we will hardly find more than $200,000 and... For Kavich film, of course, I, I ambition to have a bigger budget, to have better quality, and also to bring overseas um, um, technicians. So that was kind of natural. And, and in my own experience, mm -hmm. I would say that even though it's my first uh, co-production as a main producer, mm -hmm. I really benefited from the experience of co-production in my last feature film as a director, Diamond Island, in which I was not the main mm -hmm. producer, um, mm -hmm. but it was a French producer, my producer Charlotte Vincent from Aura Film in France. And she had experience in co-production, even though she haven't shot a film in Asia, but I really mm -hmm. could learn everything and all the steps of how to make that kind of international pudding working. And <laughs> Diamond Island was like French, Cambodia, Thailand, Qatar, Switzerland, and Germany. So that was still right. bigger than what we did on White Building. So I was not afraid of that. And the last mm -hmm. thing is that since the beginning, we had the French co-producer because I that's a French uh, woman named Marine Arigui. And she's happened uh, to have... a Cambodian father and a French mother. And we met mm. back in 2012 when I was making my, after I made my first film, Golden Slumber, and then she liked the film. So she met me to talk about potential collaboration as me as a director and her as a producer. But I already have the producer. So we discussed and somehow I found like, oh, maybe you want to produce with me Kavich Ning, which I believe it's the real talent of Cambodian cinema. So let's do it together. So since that moment, which was in 2015, we started collaborating on Kavich short film. And it was very natural for us to go on the feature film. And going back to, I think, what YJ was saying, I think the trust relationship with your international producer, international producer is really what we all aim for. But it's somehow very difficult because sometimes we just, we need the money. So we need to find someone and we skip two time with them. And we say, okay, let's go. But it's like a wedding, right? So after two time, how can you know that you're not making a mistake? So we did hear some experiences <laughs> of frustrated experiences and, and yeah, kind of like disappointed experiences of co-production. But in my relation with Marine, that was the thing that we knew each other very well. I knew that she wanted to make that film for personal reason and not 
like financial reason and obviously she didn't make a lot on white building so that really mm -hmm. created some kind of good um, yeah good path for us i guess yeah i mean like uh, you know as somebody who also did co-productions basically like my frustrations were never with my co-producers my frustrations sometimes are with rules and regulations from funds mm. or other places that don't make sense and davi you know this i complained at length about something that i helped with one of yeah. your applications because i they, they changed the rules since since i i, I got it they, but because at that time when I, we first got it we were the first to get it and i was screening bloody murder because I think that they're 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 what they were asking for just made no sense. And now you don't have to go through that because a lot of that has been fixed. <laughs> Maybe thanks to you. <laughs> I complained a lot, but anyways, you know, like I don't want to get into it. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think that, you know, and, you know, even though you didn't go to uh, script labs and stuff like that, you know, like you, you obviously like um, you had uh, a, a, another writer basically like come on board as well. And like, you know, the, the creative process, was it uh, something that you managed to do internally? Like, was, was that something that also you felt uh, was, you know, was a decision that you felt was the right one? Like, what do you think in terms of like, basically like uh, in terms of like applying to funds and stuff like that, you know, with the scripts that you had? Mm, well, it was a long process because uh, Kevich was struggling at the beginning to write the script. So we, we brought a co-script writer on board, which is an American script writer named Daniel Mattes. But it was his first experience writing as well. So it's kind of an experiment for us as well. I have nothing against the lab, actually. I think I, I went to the Torino Finland with Diamond Ion. It was a great experience for me in many mm. different of levels. Although we didn't get a uh, award at the end, which, of course, it's like the carrot at the end that everybody hoped to, to, to have. So... We did deposits at Torino Film Lab and didn't get selected, but of course that, that happens. And uh, we were considering others, but somehow the, the, the timeline didn't work because we, at the beginning for the first uh, round, like CFIC, for example, we were not having a full script, so it was impossible for us to deposit. And at the end, because I had this idea of shooting by the end of 2018, that was finally a fake idea. I mean, a destroy idea. I, we didn't, we were thinking, yeah, we, we're good with the script and let's go on. So. It's kind of like the timing needs to match as well uh, your timeline of production, but I, yeah, I, I think it would have been good for the film to go through a script lab actually. Yeah, I mean, but, you find your I way? don't, I don't think the script labs are necessary for every film, and it even if you didn't do it for the first, you can always go to the second, or in Camila's case, you know, with her third. So Absolutely. there was never, there's no real formula to it, you know. Like, I, but I do think it, it's worth it just to go through it once because once you have that experience, you you really gain a lot from it. I think you know, like just to know like how you do things. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So okay, great. Um, so yeah, do so. The question is, you know, now that we kind of know why you decided to do a co-production and things like that. So, I mean, you know, so you know, like. Uh, uh, Davi, you're here already. Like, what is your initial assessment so far? I mean, like, obviously for your end, it's necessary because you're in Cambodia. Whereas uh, the others, I think, you know, uh, Indonesia, Philippines, and Vietnam has a more established uh, local industry, for example. But I mean, obviously, you think that you know, uh, co-production is something necessary. But um, what has been your experience? Has been good? Has it, it's been something that you feel like you know? Yeah, just give us some details. Oh, hello. Who are you asking? Oh, you, you right? Davi. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I think I, I try to be realistic as much as possible, as I was saying. So as soon as 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 soon as I like analyze the situation, being we need a co-production and that's what we need to do. This film won't exist if we don't find some European funding because that's where the money for art house film shot in Southeast Asia are, is today. So if mm -hmm. I had to do co-production, I just need to make it work. So that was mostly my idea. I forgot also to mention that I, I'm myself a French, cit French citizen. I was born in France and grew up in France. So it's also very natural for me because of the network and the contacts here, which is not maybe the case for every producer in Southeast Asia to have this natural bridge with friends. So it was very natural for me. And also on board, I got some people who used to work on Diamond Island on white buildings, such as the sound designer or the gaffer, for example. So all these kind of bridges were very natural. Um, having said that, um, it's true that it, it does bring complication. It would be a lie not to say so, because suddenly you need to go into the constraint and for example, I would have liked to do the color grading for me at the beginning. Originally, I really wished to do it in Thailand uh, at mm. White Light um, um, Studio 
which is owned by Lee Shalometikul, the um, edit, uh, namely the editor of Happy Chat Pong, because we used to work together on different projects of our production company on short film and documentary. The documentary about the white building that we had to shoot because we couldn't make the fiction mm. in the white building. And finally, because of this constraint of co-production, suddenly you need to have this amount of money spent into France or into Germany or into Switzerland. So you need to follow that. So that kind of bring restrain your freedom. But as, as, as I was saying, since the beginning, as I know I need to play that game, then we just need to find the best way to play it. And it just became very complicated with COVID, obviously, because we couldn't mm -hmm. fly. And then we had to find solution. And the other partners start to be a bit frustrated about the, de the delay that everything was taking. And I had to deal also with Kavich being a bit lost of when he's going to finish the film. Can he go to France? Sometimes I was really pushing him to go to France when he was afraid of COVID, saying, it's fine, it's, 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 it's very healthy in France. And then suddenly when he was second wife, I really had to convince him, we're going to do distant color grading, you're going to love it. So that was kind of a bit confusing for him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the circumstances of last year and this year. And so, last so I mean, because, year, yeah. oh, sorry. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, I mean, uh, go on. We just have a last uh, co-production with China, actually. So, yeah. Oh, that was going to ask, ask about. Yeah. Yeah. So th that's a very different than the European funding that I used to do on Diamond Island. That was kind of a one-time opportunity, which I met the producer of Jazz Anchor during this uh, blessing Asian project market in Pusan in 2016. There was like a stupid story because we we happen to share the same name shu her name is josie shu so i just starting to make a joke on the email like we share the same name i'm a fan of jazz Anke, we should meet and then we, she did show up uh, at the meeting and then we start to discuss i pitched her the film with no plan or uh, future plan of co-production because i had no idea that jazz Anke would be interested into getting on board of a uh, southeast asian film but he actually was interested so we concluded that deal in Cannes 2018 where i show up at the party of um, the last film by Jazz Anker, uh, Ash is a Purest White, and then talk to his producer again, and then we, we finally finalize the deal there. But that has come with no restriction, it's just a deal of um, giving the Chinese territory rights uh, for the film, which is an important thing in, 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 in exchange of some um, investment from, from, from Jazz Anker company. So in that case, I had nothing to spend in China, so that was kind of an easy deal once we set up the deal. Okay, good, good, good. So uh, yeah, let's go to Carlo then, because I mean, like, you know, like the fact that now you are in, you know, uh, in France and stuff like that, you know, like, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, your film is the most complicated because you have so many darn countries. Uh, what do you think so far? I mean, it's a gut instinct kind of like answer. So like, you know, like you don't have to, you know, and you can always like, you know, preface it and by saying like, hey, my, my ex you know, my thinking can change or whatever. But wh uh, what do you think so far? Uh, about doing co-production i mean like minus the the complexities of money and budget and all that shit i i, I do feel i i, I gained much for from co-production especially like for instance um when we tried applying for a the cinema du monde um because uh we're, we're, we're co-produced by house and fire uh, a french um production i collaborated with a french writer so that that that, that certain collaboration actually also pushed more the how to say the the things that i can't really think about if you have somebody else like really like you're exchanging ideas and doing because 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 for all you know i'm I, I do feel i'm not a good writer and i guess i i think the collaboration with the writer gave me the guidance and and push of, of what things i really want and also um i think friendship is one of the most important things in co-production. That's why we <laughs> got uh, a few countries to be involved. <laughs> like for instance, like Indonesia, um, right. I was with um, Kawan Kawan Media. Um, um, I was batchmates with Yulia Ivina Bara, um, an Indonesian mm -hmm. producer in TFL. Mm -hmm. So we got to be friends. And during the, uh, when I was towards going to shoot, we were lacking money and then they were like mm. okay we, we, they co-produce <laughs> and then mm. uh with the singaporean part again um because um i, I was good friends with my dop tech and mm. the um the wife ling is also a producer so we started really collaborating not not just for this feature but we already started and tried collaborating with joe delux so joe delux was our first collaboration with the Singaporean people and then we kind of get a hang of it and we, we like each other and we I really like love love collaborating with them and, and I mm. kind of promised that be, even before all these um, plans of doing co-productions that 
whenever I actually make my first feature, I'm gonna get you. So that, that's the story. I mean, like it it it, it mm. kind of benefited me at least as a director. Let's not talk about money because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I think that you know that that you you raised a really interesting point because basically like you know in Southeast Asia we have this kind of idea that oh you know the director is also usually the main, the, the 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 writer you know to be an author uh, you have to write and mm. also direct. But I think mm. in some ways that's not always the case because if you look a lot of like a lot of like uh, directors out there, you know, like for example, Ridley Scott does not write his own films, but he still made mm -hmm. Alien. He still made a Blade Runner. Um, I mean, like as a director who basically, you know, like who, you know, you you have, you know, a self awareness is important. You know, like to understand, okay, maybe I'm not as strong as this. I mean, was that a struggle for you? Like that one of the reasons why it took you so long, or? Well, I mean, like, um, firstly, when with before collaborating with a French writer, I um the the, the writer for the film was again Carlo Abraham, a Filipino, uh, writer mm -hmm. and director, and right, then right. it, the firstly maybe because also when I started developing the film, it, I also started doing shorts. It was at mm -hmm. the same time, twenty fourteen fifteen, and I really, I guess I would want to say that I was. I wasn't really ready or I didn't really know what kinds of films I was I wanted to do or like what mm -hmm. yeah in a way so the 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 progress and the process of me doing these shorts made me realize what things I want and what I really mm -hmm. wanted to tell in a way and I think towards the end collaborating with a French writer in a way it made me mature in essence of how I think so it was easier is it it wasn't easier collaboration but also it was mm. kind of like um, it, it it gave me questions always like mm. how we collaborated was not him writing and me writing and then you check this and you check that i think a big chunk of the collaboration part of writing was just us talking mm. and the writing just came towards the end like really literally towards the end like towards yeah. the last week so <laughs> i i think it's it's much more building relationships in, in terms mm. of of you trying to collaborate with whoever, a writer, a DOP, or whatsoever. I think it, it's mm -hmm. more building relationship that you really get to know what kinds of stories you want to tell, what kind of person you're actually working with, and then all mm -hmm. will just go well. I, I do feel that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, like, it's really great to hear that, you know, like, even though the project took so long, but, you know, every step was important in terms of, like, writing and also, like, making your short films and, you know, like, and, you know, like the, the labs and everything to get to, to this point where you're now in Paris having baguettes waiting for things. Uh, <laughs> as I told you, I'm not having baguettes, but I'm surviving, so. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'll update you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, we'll do. Uh, so, uh, Camila, yeah, I mean, because... In many ways, you know, like you said, this this film, this new film you're doing is is really different because before you were just doing micro budget, and you were just shooting, you know, just like you know the way that you wanted to. Like, what 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 is, you know, how is it for you to do things in such a more, you know, um, planned and more, you know, like uh, it it just takes a lot longer. Like you know, like for you, what's the pros and cons for you, and like what what do you think about the, the whole process of co-production? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's very different, but at this point, um, the, the pros may, maybe uh, for me um, at this point, because, um, because of my experience with my first and my second feature, you, um, every film, even when you plan it, like, like how, but um, the result of every film will be different, like the, mm. the, how the process is becomes everything and um, you don't know how it's gonna end up until you it's actually finished and it's not mm. only your work it's like everyone work and collaboration mm. is something that is um, very have a very big part in filmmaking mm. so um, with my third feature I becomes quite more loose because I already experienced this, uh, the two film before uh, with collaboration. Um, I think um, what's good is that um, film actually um, re the the most energy that is good when you make film is about trust, and it's mm -hmm. good with collaboration with a lot of people in yeah. trusting you. It's 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 amazing. I mean, um, there's nothing. 
um, more beautiful than people having uh, to trust each other and then working to each other, making something. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love that kind of environment when you trust someone, even when you don't know them and then they trust you too. And then you sort of like create something that, uh, that yeah, um, the result is all about the process. Um, I mean, oh, oh, go on. Yeah. It's okay. Um, I'm about to tell the cons, but <laughs> you oh, know, yeah, yeah, please, 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 yes. Yeah. Yes, but I think the cons is like I also sort of realized that um, maybe this is only me. I don't know. Um, like every story um, is quite different. I mean, mm. um, like pre- in my previous film with uh, the scene and unseen, it's a very visual and spiritual film, which uh, most of the time I cannot ex- even explain that film myself. Mm-hmm. Like, it's <laughs> it's ve- very hard for me to explain the story and explain everything. And it's um, that's also one of the things that makes me decide, made me decide that, okay, maybe I have to just shoot it, this one myself, because it's it's quite hard with that story to to have a, to have to have to make people understand what you wanna wanna do uh, with 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 the film, but uni has a different thing, and this is what I just realized as well. I mean, uni is um, it's easier for me uh, with this story to 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 work with many people, um, mm. not as hard as before. So I don't know, but that's my. Maybe that's just me. It's my experience. Well, well, I mean, you know, in your case, you know, uh, it's also different partly because uh, your producer is, this is his first time also doing a co-production because unlike you, it really is his first time doing any kind of co-production, right? So, and of course, you know, like it's different also because like, unlike everybody else, you know, like your producer is also your husband. So, (laughs) I mean, like, what do you think he thinks about the whole co-production thing, especially as a first timer? Well, that's also one of the thing. I mean, he has um, he has a lot of um, energy to do this thing. Which actually, with my second, I realized I don't I don't have that energy to deal with mm. co-productions with the whole what you said regulation and mm. all the things. And mm. with Ifa, he he has that energy. He wants to work with it. He has his vision as well mm. uh, with the film um, and where he wants it to go. So it's sort of, I think that's also one of the things that makes me realize um, that it is important to work with a producer who also uh, push mm. um, like that because with uni exactly I don't I don't expect him to do anything actually because I um, I mean yeah I did I tried a lot of things but he did everything um, and we got um, some grants so I think he did a good job with uni I mean yeah. I'm very thankful for that yeah yeah, I think that basically, you know, of course, Ifa Isfanya is he's a well-known director by himself, but you know, like he's really stepped up to be a producer in a really great way. And I see him at markets and things like that, and he's done a really great job, I think. So that's one of the things that you know, sometimes a director, and of course, he's had one of his film, The Dancer, was a French co-production. So as a director, at least he had co-production experience, but not as a producer. And so the question is, would you be doing a co-production with your next one, or maybe not? Or haven't decided. Um, well, I think right now co-production is something that I will always have in mind. It's just I know mm-hmm. that every story and every film has a different way, like of doing mm-hmm. it, and I experience those differences. Mm-hmm. So I I'd like to try something. I mean, I I want to know more as well, like um, with my next film, what kind of um, co-production or friends or what what will happen with next i want to train many 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 different um kind of approach in filmmaking and distribution okay great 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 so uh, back to wga then uh wga so like yeah you know uh 
what has it been so far for you? Because your case is really different also because your director is Vietnamese, the project is totally mm -hmm. Vietnamese, and you're totally not Vietnamese, and you can't even speak Vietnamese. So how does it work for you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, co-production, because I think as the others have mentioned, because co-production takes a while, I think that um, it kind of worked with taste in the sense that it, it was also the process of um, you know, shaping the project and, mm. and things like mm. that. So it, it, it took that necessary time as well. So I came on board the project 2016 and then, so the timing just kind of naturally worked out. We shaped the project for a year and then it went mm -hmm. to Cannes Atelier, went to Torino, um, you know, and then at that point we found our, our partners and, you know, 28, you know, we met them in 2017 and then mm. in 2018, 2019, you know, they started to come on board officially and we started to apply for all the things. And then we shot in 2019 and, you know, so I think, the the process of development and the process of collaborating with the co-producers kind of worked out naturally and and like you said mm -hmm. it was more opportunities for me to visit vietnam to really get a sense of um what was happening there and and you know what the what bao wanted to do um mm. and 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 related to like the i think some some of the other speakers have talked about it as well the spending obligations i think because of if you accept the amount of time it takes to you know to apply for grants and to go through the logistics and the things um because and because we we had a certain relationship before and we were ha having the discussions all the time um we were able to so very early on you know say okay this is what we want to do here this these are the people that we want to work with so it just very naturally as the time was being taken you know waiting around for for results and things like that that um to to carve out what you wanted to do in all the different countries mm -hmm. to fulfill the obligations so um because there were those gaps in time where we were waiting or doing preparations um it was it was it was not as hard as as um, we would have thought to meet the different obligations it kind of happened organically mm -hmm. But, but do you find it a little bit difficult because of the language barrier sometimes because you know obviously the, the project is in completely Vietnamese you know like the, the film is in Vietnamese do you feel like as a producer basically there is a certain distance away from it or you felt that basically like despite that you know you were able to really work very well despite the language differences yeah I think so um I mean of course it would have I, I, sadly I'm terrible at picking up languages even when I when, even when I was working on Popeye you know um, whereas our other, uh, our assistant producer at the time, who is like a fully fledged producer now, and she picked up Thai like really, really quickly, but I'm, I'm just like really <laughs> terrible with languages. So unfortunately I still couldn't pick up like, um, Vietnamese. So I can say like maybe a couple of phrases, but, um, no, I think that, the, there was a common understand. I think there was a common understanding on what the mm -hmm. film was. Um, mm -hmm. It just took, you know, it just maybe took a little bit longer to go through the translation process. But I think um, sometimes it's not so much words as well. Sometimes it's through through images, through watching films together. Um, those kind of more maybe like stuff that's not in words, like more visual or abstract. Those are the things that helped us to get closer to, and and to come to an understanding of what the project is. Yeah, and I think that in many ways, you know, like um, you know, because with with uh, with Kavik's project White Building that. It's understandable because uh, in in Cambodia it's not easy to find money to make that kind of film, and you know whereas in in the Philippines and also in Indonesia actually you can get local money to make your film. It's just a whether a choice of you want to make that kind of film or not. But in your case, you know Libao is quite a singular director, and that basically like you know like I cannot imagine him getting funding from Vietnamese low, normal sources because Definitely not. <laughs> there's just no way, you know, like his film is so, and, and also because, you know, like the premise of your film is so, you know, I mean, why don't you describe the premise of the film quickly? You know, you, you know, the log line, because I mean, like if you, if you say it, a lot of people are like, wow, that doesn't sound like Vietnam, very Vietnamese. Right. So <laughs> um, the, the PG version. Um, okay. So it's about a, it's about um, a Nigerian um, immigrant who's, in Vietnam illegally that goes there um, to play football. So he wants to go there to play football professionally. And then when he goes there to play in Vietnam, he he breaks his leg while playing for the football club. And then because he's there illegally, the football club doesn't want to deal with it. So they um, they terminate his contract. And then he has to find, basically he has to find a way to um, survive in, in Vietnam because he has no money to go back home. He has no money while he's there and you know he has a family he has a son to support back home and then um while he's there he meets some um, vietnamese women that are um kind of also on the you know outside of 
on the fringes of society, and then they they kind of um, they form a sort of connection. Um, so that's that's very loosely what the film is about. Right, right. But but basically, like you know, if you've seen like Lebow's previous shorts, you know, it's mm -hmm. it's uh yeah, it, it is definitely very auteur and not very you know, um, yeah, it, it is not exactly. <laughs> It's not. It's not super narrative, basically. Like you know, like not always. So I, I think that basically, whereas you know, like when in in mm -hmm. you know the other films, I think you know, like uh, you know, even though Carlos film is very different from like other Filipino films, you know, it definitely has its own characteristics. But it's still, in many ways, it's still a little bit, you know, it's still more narrative, I would say, than basically like you know what 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 Lebao is doing. So that's another challenge I think that you have to also kind of find is how do you translate that kind of filmmaker into something that you can actually like you know uh pitch other people to yeah yeah i mean that was i guess, I guess that was where torino came in really helpful because um and and because we had a really great like script script consultant who's also you know the script consultant for for cfic franz i think franz understood that from the start so there was never any instance where franz was saying that you know bao you have to make this a narrative film that people everyone will understand a story and they're following a trajectory um i think that mm. franz knew that from the very start so he was never it was never and um the plan for him to do it was more like um the process was shaping the project to for people to understand enough um, mm -hmm. or to, to position it enough, but it wasn't to make it, um, to, to fit into a sort of set narrative. So I think that was right. a really nice sort of thing. Right, right. Okay, great. Um, we have the last uh, couple of minutes. Uh, we're going to do a Q&A. So uh, please do uh, send uh, some of the questions over. So, wow, many questions. Okay, the first one is, um, how do you find the right partners in your production? Okay, so since we're here with Weijie, so like, uh, how do you find the right partners? Um, I guess in, in my instance, it was because they were the two French co-producers that came on board Popeye were um, Marie Duba from um, Du Zimling and um, Jean that from Petite Film. So the, way, the reason I met Jean was because he was actually one of our mentors for Popeye. And I remember he was um, really, really harsh and he was very honest also, also early on. I remember he tore apart my, mm -hmm. my producing statement and all my materials, but it was a really valuable sort of experience. And he, he was very honest mm -hmm. about going through the difficult process of doing mm -hmm. the film that he was developing at the time raw which ended up being like super, super successful. And then Marie, I had met because she was also in Torino as a co-producer for a South African film called um, The Wound, um, which also, and, and I remember talking to her about Popeye at the time as well. And I thought that her notes were super detailed and I liked how blunt, again, I liked her also because she was very blunt. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just remembered these, these, two, these two French co-producers that I liked very much, not knowing they were a couple. Um, and then, you know, <laughs> I was going to say, but I didn't yeah, want to yeah. say anything. <laughs> there were a couple, and then two, you know, two years later, you know, going through the the development process with Taste, um, you know, I got to reconnect with them, and um, and uh, yeah, and because I had known them before, I, you know, of course, we met many other co-producers, potential co-producers at the project markets and the development labs, but um, what I always remember was. Their, their honesty so early on. And because we had, you know, had dinners together and it's, it's always the informal things, not the formal sort of setting, right. the informal stuff. Then um, I felt that there was a really nice connection. And I really thought that because they were, they're so willing to push that mm -hmm. that would be beneficial for Bao, who is a very shy sort of person. So they were able to push, 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 push to, to get him to break out of his shell, which is, I thought, good. And then of course, they were the ones that helped us to get um, our sales agent on board, which is, I think was important right. as well. Yeah, and I think that basically, like, you know, when you find a partner, it's really more about, you know, long-term relationships, mm -hmm. you know, because you met them already before on previous projects, you know, like, you you, you kind of, like, you know, like, establish these re relationships based on long-term stuff, not just basically, like, based yeah. on, you know, like, very short-term things. Um, mm -hmm. And same with Davi, for sure, because, you know, you mentioned that these, you know, like, the other producer is somebody you know since 2012, and you were going to work together, blah, 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 yeah. I think the, the, the very big difference is uh, whether you find or not a co-producer that feel committed for the project or just do it because they need to have some volume of uh, project and then to get some grant to be able to pay their, their expenses, which also mm -hmm. exist and, 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 and why not. But of course, you, don't, you, you prefer to go with a co-producer <laughs> that really love your project. And when we're all working in small budget uh, films, so it means that everybody needs to get involved. If not, it's create a lot of problem. And going back to the question of like, what is the flows of co-production? I did feel at the last 
steps of the post-production of white building, but it became very difficult for us to be a small budget and to arrive at the end of the production. And we had the filmmaker in Cambodia uh, trying to supervise the subtitle that was translated by someone in UK. And then the French were having the French uh, um, translation and then the lab was asking for details. And at the end, you really need to be very, very healthy in your communication and patient, not to get crazy. And so that's also come from co-production, but also small budget. So in that case, a producer and co-producer will really get involved in the film and you can build that trust long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. That's definitely the best. And I will also um, stress the fact that it's good to have a co-producer who has his good network locally in his country because he's going to bring you technicians, he's going to bring you post-production facilities. And if they're already well uh, set up in their own uh, country, it's extremely useful for you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Camila, how do you find the right partners for your production? <laughs> well, I think um, that's also when, uh, when your previous work also important, I think, in this case. I mean, um, we, like partners, um, I found par partners that how uh, they can trust on me because they see what I did and and then you know when you talk about it you know that mm. okay um, they trust your you as a as a talent they trust your story uh, uh, because also they know what you did before so maybe also i think that's why it's important to have a previous work um, uh, in mm. this case to as something that you can talk about with those people who want to be your partner so you know um, mm. how much you connect um, with them but I think um, I mean you're not you're not gonna make film once I mean you you will make film many times so um, mm. sometimes um, for me uh, you're not always fit in the first um, in the first time anyway and it's okay I mean mm. sometimes um, you don't know what you need as well maybe in the first time um, so you try things um, and you know, then the next time you know what you need and you know what you want of looking of partners. But I think in, even though you don't fit, uh, you have just, I think I believe that everyone um, will give different value in different way um, into the project um, anyway. Um, so yeah, I think it's important also for you to believe that um, as hard as it is, but all people will give you a value um, in their own way. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Carlo, uh, I'm going to spare you this question, <laughs> but I actually have another question for you, which is uh, submitted uh, by somebody else, which is specifically for you. Uh, question for Mr. Manatad, knowing that you come from a post-production background, was it a big jump when you decided to direct your own shorts or features? How did you change your label as a filmmaker from editor to director? And how did this affect your experience with co-production? Wow, long one. Hello. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there wasn't really that a big jump. I think it helped because um, with co-production, it took a while, really. Um, and also with my background being an editor, I think it helped me transition to doing films, I mean, like directing films, um, when specifically I was doing shorts. So it kind of helped. I, I don't see that there was a jump or a change from being an editor to being a director. It's more of like, I'm still a filmmaker. I mean, like I, I'm still editing as not as usual that many from before, because I right now I'm more focused on, on, on the projects that I'm making, but definitely, um, in terms of um, if I really just stay as an editor, I, as a director rather than go back, no, I, I, I do feel um, the editing gave me um, this much knowledge and experience to becoming a director. And I, I do feel the value of, of being part of post-production. And mm -hmm. like, it's, it's for instance, like I get to work with a lot of directors then unconsciously you, you, you get, you, you kind of pick their brains and then 
you, you you get the the things that you for example you you don't want to happen in your your production or things that you really want to do in your production it it it, it quite helped me and also being an editor i think it also helped me during when i was shooting my 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 films because mm-hmm. in in for instance i know what to take out i know what i would just be needing so it becomes more efficient for me rather than just getting all these shots and and then you're not you're not using it in the crafting group so it's not jumping to another label but more like just embracing the fact that it I, i'm still a filmmaker regardless of being director of an editor so how did it affect my experience with co-production um firstly because I, i mean in 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 my part i'm a first time feature filmmaker so um they would always judge with the past works that i did but also it helped because when i started doing um workshops and labs for co-production they would see my works as just like it was little back then it was one or two or three shorts but then when they see um my editing works they would have more confidence in things that i could do so it quite actually helped me so yeah mm. okay good okay, great Um, I'm I'm kind of jumping among the questions because we have a limited amount of time, so I want to get all the an- easy answers out quickly. So one of them is like really easy, which is, can you give us examples of what film labs or grants provide co-production to short films? Uh, Singapore International Film Festival has a grant for short films. Uh, I mentioned this already in the other panels, and of course there's uh, also a uh, a lab called the Short uh, Short Form Station at the Bellinale. Is it part of the Bellinale Talent? So this is the kind of film lab for short film that you can apply to. They don't have grants per se, but it's a it's a lab that you can basically attend. But yeah, basically the the main one that uh, for short films right now is the one from Singapore. And there's also Momo Film Co. also from Singapore that also gives. Uh, they do an incubation lab for shorts and also uh, gives some uh, distribution grants also for shorts. But anyways, I just wanted to answer that just to get that out of the way, um, because Alan has a lot of questions, so that's why I was like kind of like. Going to it a little bit later. Um, I think let's just answer the first and the third um, because the second one we kind of addressed a little bit with Wei Jie because we mentioned that you know he's not Vietnamese, he's working on a Vietnamese film. Um, and this one specific, so I'll, I'll ask uh, Camila and Davi to answer. After attending film labs with your earlier films, how do you develop your next projects which do not go to labs anymore? So Camila, do you do you have any ideas? Because of course this is going to be for your future, but. <laughs> Um, I think um, that's what you learn in 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 film labs, like how what's the steps and what you need to think about when you have a story, when you have an idea, what you, what other things that you have to think about, what what things you have to prepare, um, what things you need to 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 know, like what's the goal of the project um, and where it goes and everything and how to develop uh, the script. I mean, you learn that you learn all of that in script or film labs, and so the next project, hopefully, you can do it by yourself. I mean, you know right. how to do it. Like that's the point of the labs is like school. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that basically, um, you know, uh, Davi is the same thing for you as a director, right? Because the next project, you're not going to labs anymore, uh, as a director, not as a producer. You're mute. You're muted. You're muted. Sorry. So yeah, as I said, I I went to Torino Film Lab for Diamond Island. I I did enjoy the experience, but for my new project named No Return, I made it clear with my producer that I would prefer not to go to labs, even though uh, then we take out the opportunity of having a cash award at the end, because I really wanted to. It's a very personal project in a way, and I wanted to really dig with myself and have this this bubble with the film, and also not to have to advertise the pitch of the film before it's. It's made. That's also something that bothered me a bit because when you get all these European film funds hmm. or, or film funds and labs, then you need to have put your old synopsis online, and that's kind of a bit frustrating when you want also your film to keep some surprise for the for its audience. Uh, but then I'm a very participative person as a director and as a producer. So uh, instead of having a lab, I don't work only by myself. I will have a lot of friends around me that I will share my mm-hmm. script with and have the feedback and try to. But at least I choose who I share um, my script with. So that's kind of the process for me. Yeah, right. 
Right, right. And then uh, and the other question is, most grants give only parts of the funds and the rest will go to at the end of the production. How do you manage with cash flow? Uh, Wei Jie, this is a really good question for you. <laughs> mm, he uses um, his own money. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, yeah, you suffer immensely. <laughs> Um, I mean, that's, I mean, part of it is also you have, um, in the case of taste, I mean, we were, we were very lucky to have like, you know, two, two people come on board, um, two producers come on board with financing. So, I mean, that obviously helped a lot. And then I guess you have to figure out your cash flow schedule as well, um, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was, of course, it was very painful during the production. Um, so, um, you know, when, when cash needs to come very quickly, it was very painful, but um, it's yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's just a really painful thing that you just have to manage, whether it's through <laughs> your cash cash flow schedule or to find find you know ways. <laughs> find ways. <I> mean, <laughs> that sounds very obscure. Wow. Exciting. Yeah, I know. Like, wow. What did you do? <laughs> you know, did you sell Rob your kidney? Or like, yeah, <laughs> rob a bank. I mean, like you know. <laughs> The mind is like exploding with possibilities. <laughs> if you love a project enough, there, there's many ways that you can figure things out. Wow. Still mysterious. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I, I, now everybody's going to be like, you know, like really curious now. So that got questions more for producers, obviously. So uh, yeah, what is so like, yeah. In our case, uh, in France, you do have banks specialized in films. For film loans, so their name is Coffee Loisir and Coffee Ciné. So they kind of have specialized bank who know exactly the business because there's so many films produced in France and distributed. So we did that for Diamond Island, but I was not in charge. And we did that for White Building. I was not directly in charge because that's the French producer who is going to go to the film bank. But of course, as we have this very trustful relationship and we share like nearly 50-50 of the film. So we were really in the discussion. And the, the bad thing of it is that you're going to pay a very, very, very high interest rate. Mm. But well, that you need the money to make the film. So let's say in the example of why building, the, the budget of the film is a bit more of a half a million dollars. And obviously, a lot of the funding arrive when you deliver all the films. So you don't have the money when you need to make the films. So the French producer made a long negotiation with the French bank specialized in film, showed them all the contracts that we had, decided how much amount that we wanted to have the cash flow for in advance. And that's how we, we made it work. So at the end, I was very afraid with COVID because when you delay one year post-production, that can be very complicated. But I was lucky enough that the French producer had some kind of cash flow on other projects. So she could secure that. If not, it would be very complicated for us because for a very small company in Cambodia, we didn't have any cash flow in advance. So yeah, we could make it work. So, so far, it's still okay, but we're still now not having accomplished the film and finishing the film. So we still need to look for the money to come. Yeah, I think that's one of the weakness in Asia is that we don't really have this kind of system of bank loans yeah. for uh, uh, film projects. Um, because like what we did with some of our projects also previously was, you know, like we had, you know, bank guarantees uh, in Germany and stuff like that, that helped us to basically cash flow the film. But uh, it, it's something that, you know, it just doesn't exist in Asia and in Southeast Asia. So this is why we do co-productions. Yeah. <clears throat> so to be very concrete, because of that cash flow problem, I had some time to ask some funds to really sign with the French producer so the French mm -hmm. producer can show that this contract is affiliated with them so they can ask the French bank to make the cash flow advance. And if it was yeah. Antarctica, who was the main, like, uh, and, and yeah, that, that's something that, and then mm -hmm. you really need to trust your co-producer, of course. So that's mm -hmm. kind of a very big thing. Yeah, yeah just, uh, just to reiterate what Davy said, yeah, because we had the trust with our co-producer um, they and because, you know, they had managed a lot of, you know, solid productions before that that helped in terms of and then because we had these grants guaranteed in terms of the disbursements of cash, they were able to, um, mm. you know, give us some when we needed it earlier. Right. Right, right, right. Okay, we're done with that one. So um, we're going to just go a little bit to 9.20. Um, so just six more minutes. But uh, there's an interesting question here. Isn't it difficult to get a foreign co-producer, especially when script or story is specific on the culture of the director or writer? Do you still keep in mind how the film will affect a certain cultural impact to the audiences who will watch from the main country of production? Carlo, this is a perfect question for you because your story is very specific about the typhoon that basically yeah. like uh, that hit uh, the Philippines and the aftermath of it. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think yes, like what you mentioned, it's about the typhoon. It's it it happens in the Philippines, in Europe or wherever they haven't really experienced this kind of matter. But with that, it's basically just an element. But more importantly, I think the 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 core of the film is universal. It's basically it's basically a mother and son story. So regardless of it being culture specific, with the themes that you're actually um um putting forward with the film i think more importantly the, the core of the film needs to reach those um uh reach the how to say like the co-producer should really understand and 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 i get that every film regardless of it being culture specific have this themes of being really universal like you say family friendship um love th- those kinds of things so regardless of i mean it it also mm-hmm in a case that when you present something that they really don't understand or not within the reach of of their mindset as as their culture that they have um it also helps you in a way like me as a director because in a way when you show the cut they would have things to say and um things that go go on their mind which actually when you're trying to do the film or collaborating by writing and when you're actually shooting you keep in mind things that you can actually change for for for, uh, for in a way for it to be more understandable and universal but but still keeping the things that you really want for the film so i think more than it being culture specific the, the film needs to have this universal touch of things that i mean those kind of things that i i mentioned so yeah yeah and it, i think that's like, extreme... hmm. yeah, yeah go, go, go ahead no 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 i was just going to say that you know like uh, yeah exactly like sometimes it's just a matter of uh you know uh, just finding the universal themes within your very specific local film you know because yeah. it can be completely local but as long as people can you know like uh you know you make it relatable to other people you know uh it's just a matter of just basically like knowing and understanding how other people understand your project and making sure that they also get the the the, the context you know yeah right? yeah context and, and sometimes even even me like sometimes i watch a film i don't really understand but i feel something and that's i think that's also one of the most important factors of 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 a film it's like it, it hits you and sometimes when you go out of the movie theaters or like wherever you watch it you still think about it regardless of you understand this part or whatsoever or not it it still it still, it still has an effect on you so i think that's the most important thing yeah. right and then uh, you know with camila uh, you know cuz your project is basically like in some ways you know if you read you know if you read the story of the project it could easily be a very local indonesian film but you managed to basically translate that into a film that managed to get you know like french and singaporean like money so how did you do that because you know like if you read it it's about the girl who gets proposed you know from many different from different men in indonesia so how did you translate that for international audience well i think i have the same feeling maybe um with my previous work i mean i mean rayman you know the whole the whole story of my second feature i mean <laughs> <laughs> i have the same feeling i mean that film is very very cultural and i i really don't think that um i don't know maybe um maybe it's very it's too specific i have that i have that doubt in me as well in my story like maybe foreign co-producer wouldn't understand what i did and everything but when the film finished like and i decided to not having a co-producer in that in that one and trying to make it as as much as i want but actually when when the film finished i was also have that doubt like oh maybe people will wouldn't understand the film how it, uh-huh. it doesn't even work in festivals and things like that but as carlos said like even as cultural as the scene and unseen like it has universal story on it and mm. it it did well in uh, it works in the festival and and with that experience i then realized like even as cultural as it is people will connect um with your film if if um when when it really shows uh, what you want them gifts in the in the film um so it's just about communication i think um that that is 
yeah, it's hard in 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 the development stage, of course, because you don't have any material, you don't have anything to show. Mm. Uh, but uh, that's what that's what it is important to work together. <laughs> I think mm. with a lot of people as well to communicate as much as you can, because actually, even as culture as it is, it has a universal story that people can relate. Okay, sorry, um, you know, it is 920. Unfortunately, because there is another session that I have to do It's not public, uh, which is the jury deliberation. So I have to go. <laughs> so that's the reason why like we have to cut it short, but we answered eight questions, which is I think, really good. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Camila. Thank you, Weijie. Thank you, Carlo. Thank you, Davi. Uh, you know, hopefully you had fun just talking about these things. Um, and you know, like, yeah, so hopefully, like, we'll, we'll keep some of these questions. Uh, maybe we can try to answer them at a, a different time but anyways thank you so much for listening tomorrow we'll be back at six o'clock with the uh the new timing for the panel called uh you know is the era of studios upon us in southeast asia so if you'd like to come and watch that that's at six o'clock tomorrow so please stay tuned and until then i'll see you tomorrow and thank you all thank, thank you. you good evening thank you, thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone bye